I'm really excited about Intel's XESS technology. I think that this can hopefully have a bigger impact on gaming than maybe their actual GPU launch. And what I mean by that isn't that I'm not excited about their GPU launch. I'm glad to see more competitors in that space. And hopefully it can do something for pricing, but the fact that it's still being produced on TSMC right now, eh, we'll see. But XESS, or I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Is it ZXS? Is that how you're supposed to pronounce that? I think, you know, if you're gonna spell it like this, why don't we call it XS, right? XS, we got excess frame rates because that's what this does. This is a, it's a DLSS competitor, but in a way that FSR isn't, right? So FSR is trying to compete with DLSS in the sense that, well, you render the game at a lower resolution, increase the frame rate, try to make it look like native, cool. But the way that it does it with FSR is just a spatial upscaler. It doesn't use temporal data and it doesn't use any AI algorithms. And that has some advantages in the sense that it doesn't introduce ghosting that you get from the temporal data, but it also has some problems where when you run it at lower resolutions, like if you're upscaling from 1080p to 4K or from sub 1080p to 1080p, FSR can really kind of fall apart. I really like it at ultra quality settings, especially at 4K, but when you, at the lower resolutions, DLSS really does have some major advantages. But DLSS has some major disadvantages. DLSS is limited to only RTX cards and not everybody has an RTX card, even Nvidia customers. A lot of them are still sitting on like a GTX 1060. But XCSS or XS or ZSS or whatever this is, is in addition to being poorly named, open to all GPUs. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna run equally on them. It is gonna be designed to run better on Intel GPUs than on other ones. So it has its own hardware acceleration like, R like Nvidia does on their Tensor cores with their RTX cards with DLSS, but it has a fallback method to run on any GPU. Now we don't have data yet on how well it's gonna run on other GPUs. So there's a lot of this that still remains to be seen, but if this is able to deliver pretty solid performance on AMD and Nvidia GPUs, this could end up being huge. Um, now, I'll give you some more thoughts on this, but many of you will probably here for like, I just show me the side-by-sides and get your fat head out of the way. Okay, fine, boom. First, let me show you where this is coming from because there's some major drawbacks here. This is coming from this YouTube video, which I will link in my description. And what is this? Well, this is uh, from Intel's Innovation 2021 thing. And here's the main problem. This is uploaded at 1080p 60 FPS as its highest setting. And if you're gonna be talking about 4K upscaling, Intel, please give us some 4K video. Now maybe that'll come out in the future. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, 4K will be out. And if so, I'll try to link it in a pinned comment or in my description. So maybe uh, check my description, check the pinned comments, all of that. But that's what this is. Now notice that this has some pretty slow, steady camera panning angles. And notice that it, um, you know, <laughs> you don't see free swinging uh, camera in a first person shooter. It's pretty slow. Also notice that we're only seeing 1080p native versus a 4K XCSS upscale. I would, uh, we do see some magnification, which is nice because that helps cut through the YouTube, uh, you know, the, there's a lot of compression on 1080p YouTube videos. Uh, so basically I'm saying there's a lot of downsides here. I'd love to see 4K native versus 4K, uh, 4K XCSS upscaled from 1080p rather than just versus the native 1080p. There's so many things I'd like to see here that we don't see. But if I pop over here to where I was originally, this is a video cards article where they have screen captured some of these uh, to give us a better look. So if we do look at the fine details here though, I'm pretty impressed. And again, link will be in the description because uh, there's a little bit, well, I'm doing the still image here. There shouldn't be too much YouTube compression. There's still a little bit. So feel free to click the link in my description. But here's my thoughts. I absolutely see more solid rendering around the edges of the people here. Look at the crane in the background. It looks much, much sharper on the XCSS upscale. Now, what I'm not sure about is uh, oftentimes with DLSS, you'll see the image break up a bit in motion, especially when it's not just these smooth camera panning angles. So I'm wondering if we're gonna see the same kinds of issues with XESS, but if it's at least as good or almost as good as DLSS, let me jump to the next slide here while I'm talking, then I think this is going to be a really big deal. Again, if it runs well, look at the details on the hood here, the creases in the cloth, and look at them here. 
So that's a that's a big difference in my opinion. Now you can also tell this is not exactly the same shot because the head is turned at a slightly different angle. Um, but again, if we if we jump in here with the fine lines and things like that, now it, it almost looks to me like there's some sort of um, cast like like I'm, it's probably not you know contrast adaptive sharpening from from AMD, but it, it almost feels like something like that is happening here in addition to the upscaling pass because I do feel like the the hard edges and like things almost just look like darker contrast to me. Um, on those uh, borders and stuff, which I think to my eye looks nice. And a lot of people like that aspect of FSR. So anyway, uh, again, jumping to the next scene. So what games are they actually doing? So far, these shots have been from Hitman 3, which I love to see that we're seeing this in actual real game. And then our next shot we're going to take a look at is from the Rift Breaker. So this is from the Rift Breaker. Again, look at the contrast difference here. Now, you can also tell there's a slightly different shot. Like, look at the lighting here, the lighting here. So there is slightly different lighting in these two scenes, but it certainly feels like there's much crisper, cleaner details on, on things like this um, that wouldn't just be taken into account from the slightly different lighting. Look at the clarity here on this turret. It does look much clearer, but again, this is from a compressed 1080p video and trying to show us the uh, 4K upscaling, although the magnification helps, uh, you know, helps deal with some of that. So it's giving us that closer look, uh, which is nice. Now, they also announced in this video that their uh, game developers can submit games for their early access consideration into this program. And the shot here, by the way, is we have seen some XESS here before, but this one was just from like some kind of Intel demo, not from actual games. So I'm back. Uh, I, what I really like is that we're seeing this running in actual games. There's at least two games that are going to support it, which is great. Um, hopefully lots more on the way, and this early access thing could hopefully help out with that. So yeah, for, for XESS to work, it needs to do two things. It needs to be at least almost as good as DLSS, and I think better than FSR, because FSR is going to be easier to implement. So if it's better than FSR and at least almost as good as DLSS, actually get support in games <laughs> and runs decently on NVIDIA and AMD hardware. That's a lot of big asks, but if it's able to do that, I, I would be excited to see this kind of go the way of G-Sync FreeSync, Free where we saw NVIDIA come out with this really cool G-Sync stuff, but then see a more open competitor that can do almost the same thing, almost as good, but since it's so much broader support, and, may, and, and it just makes sense to implement that, right? So I'd love to see this go this way. I've got to run to work. <laughs> so I had more thoughts, but talk to me in the comments section. I hope all of you have an excellent day.